Uh, form is the illusion of space on a flat surface. Form we talk about in our making as the image or the entity of the thing that you're creating. It's, it's a very, it's a generic word, form. And, uh, but it does have an existence, that's the key. Form is an existence. It's intrinsically there, somehow or other. And so, even the most formless flat paintings are forms. Even a minimal painting using a paint roller and one color has a form in the sense that it's a very thin rectangle on the surface of the wall and there's a relationship between it and the viewer, which is spatial. So, uh, color, we say, is form because it interrupts the flat surface. If you look at a painting in different kinds of colors, you see that it has an entirely different spatial effect in the flat surface that it's on. Mm -hmm. If you look at, for example, as a painting I was looking at yesterday, a Frank Stella painting of uh, colors in a kind of square going round and round like this, from a distance, it has a spatial hollowness to the center. It seems to go in spatially and out again. It certainly isn't flat. As you walk closer to the painting, you see that it is entirely a two-dimensional surface with colored stripes on it. So form is also to do with, um, you know, to do with hollowing out the surface of the canvas by implying form, how it's done, form of space, I don't know. But implicitly, when you put a mark on the canvas, you are creating a form somehow or other. You put many, many marks on the canvas and you create a larger entity. And uh, the space that surrounds the form creates the form. So you have the two things together, the form and the space. And um, so you can't really talk about form without understanding uh, space also. The structure is... is um, uh, an aesthetic idea, basically, is not is not necessarily a physical idea in painting. Although uh, geometry and structure enters into my understanding um, in a sense that I feel like I need to make the left hand side of the painting relate to the right hand side of the painting. I need to be able to bring things together, um, and that is, a, that is a structural process. But what you bring together are disparate or contrasting elements, things that don't necessarily go together. So if you can pull that one off, if you can bring contrasts into relationship with each other, you have a dynamic, uh, a dynamic effect. And this is what artists do, uh, you know, one way or, or another. And uh, contemporary artists use chaos as a way of <clears throat> breaking through convention. Um, but uh, nevertheless, it's very difficult um, to be unconventional, even though um, even though you might try to do things to an extreme, to a limit, to to um, uh, an, an, almost an, 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 an invisibility in terms of its form, and content. You might want to use uh, structure at, at the extreme. Uh, edge. Energy, um, I think I, I, I feel like I'm a fairly energetic, not, not so much of a reflective painter in the sense that I like action, I like the process, I like to use the paint, I like to have the experience of the painting. And that's definitely action oriented. So. The video, when I saw myself painting, it was quite surprising to me because it seemed to me I was just back and forth, walking back and forth, constant energy, mixing up paint, walking back and forth. And um, uh, it's uh, very intense, it's very uh, focused, this sort of this feeling of the dynamic, trying to make something dynamic. And if it isn't dynamic, it starts to look boring or dead or dull or contrived or not in the moment, then desperate measures are called for. <laughs> and, 
<laughs> and you know, but these are kind of kind of balanced by by you know your sense of um, uh, your sense of not risking totally everything, otherwise you lose completely. But sometimes it works that way. Sometimes um, you do risk everything, and it somehow it, just, it, it transforms it, itself into something else. So the danger is conservatism, being you know too self-satisfied or satisfied with what you have. Oh, perspective. Okay. Um, well, perspective is part of space, isn't it? I mean, you know, the invention of perspective was the ordering of space on a canvas so, or on a flat surface, so that there is a uh, mechanical system called perspective drawing that allows you to put everything down so it looks like it relates together, going to the same vanishing points and that kind of thing. But um, hardly anybody uses that. It was an in innovation. 15th, 16th century in Italy, but how do anybody ever use this perspective? But perspective really has to do with the foreground and the background, and being able to put in relationship spatially on a flat surface the, uh, the feeling that there is space, there is a diminution, there is distance. Um, the, the, in my painting called Three Ducks, for example, which is actually a sunset over a lake, um, I kind of enjoyed the, um, the space in there, the illusion of space in there. But I didn't want to get into that alone. I wanted to have the painting to have a flatness also. So there's some very big brush strokes in there. And if they're the right color and the right tone, they look as if they're luminous. And they look as if they are on the other side of the lake. So it's that kind of, of perspective that I use it isn't mechanical perspective, but it is a sense of distance. And also distance with, with flatness, with two dimensionality. That's also significant. In fact, my paintings have to be flat. In the end, uh, one is trying to make beautiful forms. Try to, try, I'm trying to make lyrical um, images that people can, you know, can like and identify with and get pleasure out of. Um, and so in the end there is this overriding sense of uh, the lyrical beauty of life, how gentle things are actually, even though they might be threatening or they might be difficult. In the end there's peace and there's a certain kind of harmony and resolution. So. Uh, there's also a need in a painting for a kind of transcendental stasis, a kind of other level of completion that um, is, is so resolute that in a way it's unassailable, it's mysterious. And uh, when, it, when, when, a, when a work of art reaches that level, then it becomes a kind of masterpiece status. And um, it's enduring and, and, and wonderful forever, people find over the generations, over the centuries, the same mystery and the same uh, uh, fascination. Uh, and these things, uh, these things are kept and then maintained and they survive. So if that's possible, if you can work through all this and still come out the other end with something truly wonderful, then Obviously, what you're doing is okay. <laughs>